What did I get married for? On a day two years ago, I was certainly happy. I thought I would spend the rest of my life with the person I loved, taking vows of love. And yet now, I just work as a housekeeper in my in-laws' house. How did this happen? I just wanted a simple married life, but now I want to leave this house. I've thought that many times, but when it comes down to it, I freeze up and can't take that last step. Is this going to be my life forever? Just when I was starting to give up, a glimmer of hope saved me. My name is Brandy. I am 33 years old. I got married to my husband Hank two years ago, and we originally worked at the same company. We dated for three years before getting married. I quit my job and became a housewife when we registered our marriage. Things were good up until we entered our newlywed life, when my father-in-law suddenly passed away. Up until then. My father-in-law, mother-in-law, and sister-in-law all lived together. It seems that my father-in-law was the breadwinner of the family. At the time, my mother-in-law was a housewife, and my sister-in-law was a university student. The inheritance that my father-in-law left behind was not a significant amount, and it was consumed by my sister-in-law's tuition fee. In the midst of all that. My mother-in-law contacted my husband. Hank, please come back to our house. Please help us. Huh? At first, my husband refused to help. Even if you ask for help, I have a life with Brandy too. Of course, I understand that. I want to make you and Brandy feel uncomfortable. So please come back to our house. No. Please, Hank. There is no one else we can rely on. Over the phone, my mother-in-law begged and cried. I, who was listening to the conversation next to him, felt a mix of emotions. It seems that my mother-in-law has been a housewife for her whole married life. Even if she says she wants to start working now, it's not easy to find a job immediately. So my husband proposed to give her money, but she refused. Money? You don't have to do that. Just come back to our house. Then you won't have to pay rent either, right? That's true, but we just got married. It's okay. Brandy and I get along well. I won't make things difficult for Brandy. Well, I don't know. Please, ask Brandy herself about this. She will surely understand my request. I think my mother-in-law knew from the beginning that I wouldn't be able to refuse her. Yes, there was no way I, who had just gotten married, could muster the courage to reject her proposal to live together. My husband gave me a week's grace period, and I thought about it over and over again in my own way. But no matter how much I thought about it, I couldn't come to the conclusion of refusing to live together. Of course, I wanted to enjoy my newly wed life with my husband. But if I were to reject my mother-in-law's proposal here and now, it was clear that our relationship with my husband's family. Would deteriorate in the future. We must get along well with his family from now. Therefore, I couldn't afford to be disliked by my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. After much consideration, I decided to live together. My husband worried about me until the end, but I insisted that everything would be okay, and we moved to my in-laws house. On the day of the move. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law welcomed me with open arms. Welcome, Brandy. Good to see you. I'm excited to have you here. Thank you, both of you. If we live with my in-laws, we won't have to pay rent, so my husband's take-home pay should be enough to support everybody. My mother-in-law said she will look for work, 
And if things are still tough, I can go back to work. That's what I thought. But at that time, I still hadn't realized the real reason why my mother in law had proposed that we live together. I didn't figure it out until two weeks after we moved in. My husband was still as busy as ever with work and not returning until after nine at night. That had become his daily routine. I woke up at 5 30 every morning to see him off and make breakfast for everyone. On that day, as I was having breakfast alone after seeing off my husband, I heard a loud voice calling me. When I looked in the direction of the voice, my mother in law had just entered the room. Oh, good morning! Without waiting for me to greet her, she interrupted me and raised her voice in anger. Wait a minute! Just what do you think you are doing? I just finished seeing off Hank and was about to have breakfast. I can't believe it! You going to eat before me, or Lucy? Huh? But I have to go to the city hall after this. I don't care about that. How dare you be so rude as to eat before the people of this household? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. As my mother in law starts to get angry, my head becomes muddled. I don't understand why she's so upset. Perhaps hearing her voice, my sister in law Lucy comes down from the second floor. Realizing that I am being scolded by my mother in law, she laughs at me. Oh no, Brandy got mom pissed. But it's really your fault, Brandy. Because you are not very good at handling things. What? What did I do was so wrong? I've been living with you for the past two weeks. And I've realized that you are the type of person who makes us irritated. What? I wonder why I have to be told such things. From that day on, my life became a living hell. My mother in law and sister in law teamed up to mock and criticize me. Brandy, make sure you clean and do all the laundry. Mom and I are going out. So make sure you work properly, Mrs. Housekeeper. Okay? Housekeeper? I'm not living here just to do housework. Huh? Then why are you here for? So shameless. No wonder my brother had such poor taste. Wait. Please, at least do your own laundry. You are so annoying. We're letting you live in this house. Don't complain. That's right. If you dare to go against us, we will tell my brother to divorce you. But this. They no longer consider me as part of their family. I managed to endure it for the first few months, but I can't take it anymore. One day, when my husband came from work, I opened up to him about my feelings. Hey, Hank, sorry to bother you. Even though you're tired, can I talk to you for a sec? Sure, what's up? Well, it's about your mom and sister. They've been pushing all their household chores onto me, and it's been quite tough. I see. They've been making you do all the housework. I nodded slightly to my husband's question, but I couldn't tell him everything that had been happening to me. As I had only been able to convey the bare minimum of the harassment I had received from them. You know, even though I'm your wife, I'm still an outsider, right? So I was hoping you could indirectly let them know that it's becoming too much for me to handle. I understand. I'm sorry. I had no idea things had gotten this bad. It's okay. Also, Is it okay if I get a part time job during the day, too? Why the sudden change? Well, I don't know. I just feel like I want to get out of the house a bit during the day. If that's what you want, go for it. Thank you, Han. 
I had been vague with my husband, but the reality was different. The more I stayed in this house, the more trouble my mother-in-law and sister-in-law piled on me. I started to feel like I didn't want to be at home as much as possible. So I quickly found a job and started working at a bakery from the following month. While my time at home had certainly decreased, but bullying from my in-laws had not stopped. In fact, it might have gotten worse with my increased absence. In addition, my husband's admonishment only made his mother and sister angrier. This lifestyle had entered its second year, and their treatment of me was getting worse day by day. My mother-in-law had said she was looking for a job, but she made excuses saying that she had failed her interview. However, she had not even gone to the interview in the first place. My sister-in-law had graduated from college, but she was only working part-time to earn her own pocket money. My husband had warned them several times, but each time they would apologize and promise to find jobs. But it never materialized. I had enough of this kind of life. If you say that much, then you should leave, one might think. But I couldn't. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law would change their attitude in front of my husband. And I couldn't obtain my clear evidence of their bullying. Then one day, while I was doing my usual housework, I heard my mother-in-law and sister-in-law arguing. It seemed they had made plans to go out, but both claimed they had no money. I thought it was stupid. But my mother-in-law called out to me. Hey, you! Worthless daughter-in-law. Come here. We're going out now, but we don't have any money. Can you lend us some? I'm sorry, but it's tough for me too, before payday. What? Why are you refusing? You don't have the right to refuse, you know. Even if you say that, just give me the money already. My mother-in-law grabbed me and took my wallet out of the pocket of my apron. I had been carrying my wallet in my apron since she had taken it out of my bag without permission before. Hey, please, stop it! When I reached out to take back my wallet, my mother-in-law slapped my hand away. Then, looking at the contents of my wallet, my mother-in-law opened her mouth in disbelief. What is this? There's hardly anything in here. Look at this. There's only $30 in the wallet. What? Seriously? You work. And yet, there's only this much in your wallet? That's really bad. You're really useless. It's frustrating just watching you. And now you can't even contribute anything. Yeah, seriously. You are terrible at housework too. You are just a worthless bitch. <laughs> the laughter of the two echoed in the room, and my self-esteem continued plummet. Then my mother-in-law made an unexpected comment. If she's just going to make us irritated like this, why don't we just ask her to leave? Uh, that's a good idea. She's a nuisance anyway. If you think that getting rid of this bitch will make our life easier. You're genius, mom. And since her living expenses are now saved, we can use the extra money ourselves. It seems that they think of me as nothing more than a servant and a source of money. I had had enough of their attitude and behavior. If you're going to have that kind of attitude, then I won't hesitate to take action against you. I regained my composure and clearly told them what I thought. Oh yeah? Is it really okay that I leave? Of course. Please leave as soon as possible. Yeah. Your presence is just a nuisance. But only if you have somewhere to go, though. 
I see. Thank you very much. Goodbye then. I quickly headed to my room and packed my things. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law seemed a bit puzzled by my swift action, but I ignored them and left the house. I went to a hotel near my husband's office. I contacted him and waited for him to finish work. Several hours later, my husband finished work, and we met up. But he seemed understandably bewildered. Brady, hey. Why are you here? I finally confessed everything to my husband when he asked me about it. Honey, I'm sorry for not telling you this before, but actually, I've been bullied by your mother all this time. What? You mean my mom? Not only your mom, Lucy does it too. At first, it was just pushing me to do more housework. But recently, the verbal abuse has increased, and they've even started demanding money. Th- that can't be true. No matter how much my husband loves me, he is still blood related to his family, including his mother and sister. It's understandable that he can't believe what I said without any evidence. It's difficult to ask him to believe me. So I took out the divorce papers that I had prepared in advance and showed them to him. He looked like he was about to cry and tore up the divorce papers. Hank, why? I'm sorry, Brandy. I didn't notice that you were suffering so much. Why are you apologizing, Hank? Brandy, I know you are not the kind of person who would tell lies like that. But I have no proof. I understand you better than anyone else. When he told me that, tears flowed from my eyes. My husband gently embraced me as I cried like a child. He believed me, his wife, instead of his mother and sister. That alone was enough to make me feel relieved. The next day, my husband and I returned to my in-laws' house. When my mother-in-law saw my face, she furrowed her brow, but quickly put on a facade in front of my husband. Brandy, where did you go? I was worried about you. The mother-in-law told a blatant lie. Hank went straight to his room and began packing his luggage. Then he said to his mother and sister, "Brandy and I are leaving this house. You can do whatever you want." What? What are you saying, Hank? That's right, Hank. What happened all of a sudden? How can you be so calm about it? Brandy was hurt so badly because of you guys. Wh- what are you talking about? We didn't do anything, right, dear? Yeah, Hank. You are not seriously believing what that woman says, are you? We didn't do anything. My sister-in-law even covered her face with both hands and pretended to cry. But such actions had no effect on Hank. He raised his voice and said to the two of them, "Don't be ridiculous. Cut it out already. Do you even understand how Brandy felt all this time? Of course, I'm also at fault for not noticing it until now." But the biggest responsibility lies with you guys. I've turned a blind eye to the fact that you didn't work until now, but I've had enough. We're leaving. Wait, Hank. What will happen to us if you leave now? Yeah. Wait. What about our lives? How should I know? You guys have been making us work while you just did whatever you wanted. On top of that. You been bullying my wife? How rotten can you be? Aren't you ashamed in front of our dead father? Let me tell you, I don't consider you guys as my family anymore. From now on, Brandy and I will live happily together. Don't you dare interfere. Got it? My husband gently smiled and took my hand, and we started to leave the living room. Then the mother-in-law shouted. Wait! 
my mother-in-law and sister-in-law look at me with, with tears in their eyes. They must be hoping to get my forgiveness here, so that they can get my husband's forgiveness as well. Brandy, I'm so sorry. Staring at the mother-in-law as she says this, I firmly respond. That's enough of that kind of talk. There's nothing you can say now that will make me forgive you. Please don't say that. We won't do anything anymore. I can't believe that. For the past two years, I've been living a life like hell. Now that I'm finally free, you want me to fall back into that hell again? I won't waste any more of my life on a loser like you. I turned my back on them and started walking. My husband walked with me, matching his stride to mine, and I felt like crying. After that, the two were forced to live a difficult life. Even though they owned the house and didn't have to pay rent, they still had to pay for utilities, food, property tax, and so on. There was no way they could cover those expenses, which just my sister in those part-time job. So my mother-in-law ended up starting a part-time job as well. However, since she had no work experience, she could only find jobs with low wages and major allowances. As a result, they were no longer able to enjoy the luxurious they used to have, and they became quite worn out. My husband still receives regular requests for them for help from those two. But he ignores all of their messages without pampering them in the slightest. I wonder if they will ever come to understand their own situation someday. Well, it's no longer my concern. On the other hand, we are currently in the midst of looking for a new house. We are searching for a good place that is halfway between my husband's company and my part-time job. I am grateful to my husband who believed in my words at that time. I want to spend my life with him forever.